All right, we're here with JJ, and it is time to get to work with some workstation motherboards. What do we have here? Uh, well, like you said, we've got our actually WS series of products. Um, these, you know, like I said in the, you know, in our segmentation overview, are really focused on somebody that's really interested in content creation, productivity, uh, you know, linear types of workflows. They're looking for a platform that's got a feature set that really aligns with that type of usage model. Now, what does that really mean? Yeah, is, what, you know, what does that mean? Because let me let me let me jump in here real quick because mm -hmm. just just in looking at this, I'm a gamer. Yeah. Right. But, you know, I'm starting to grow up and I'm doing this as a job. Right. And then I saw this. So it's kind of hit me in a strange way because I'm like, whoa, I've never considered a workstation motherboard before. So right. I think this product may hit people the same way it hit me. Like, and I might, and they might start thinking, you know, like, as I'm growing up, I can still game with this. Yeah. But I can also get my work done in a way that I cannot do with some other gaming mother motherboards. Is that definitely, definitely what we have here? Yeah, I mean, and that's really kind of the interesting thing that we have with the two boards is that one side, we've got the P9DWS, which mm -hmm. is a workstation board. And here we have the Z87WS, but actually they're two different chipsets. Um, this supports still the fourth generation Core Series processors, but this is on the C2... Uh, 226 based chipset, and this is actually based on the Z87 based chipset. Right. So this is a lot closer to let's say like H series in terms that it's not an overclocking oriented chipset, yeah. but it's focused for content creation, for productivity, for that business environment, or, or for uh, you know professionals. And with that, there is actually some more expansion, like there's more PCI lane allocation support, and there's a mm -hmm. couple of other variables. While Z87, it we're taking that inherent chipset and kind of amalgamating it into kind of a more workstation oriented focus by taking the feature sets that we are inherently applying to a workstation board and then bringing it with the kind of the performance oriented characteristics of Z87. Yeah, that's why that one kind of caught my eye, but I mean, I, I'm someone who's somewhere in between workstation, you know, as far as needs go and gaming. Right, so, right, of course. So you, so, you both. so, you know, the first thing is right here uh, for the P9DWS, you get all the classic hallmarks mm -hmm. of what you would expect with the WS series board. You have Xeon support, you have official ECC memory support, you have that enhanced optional validation, so that's mm -hmm. going to be things like if you want to run like an Arica or an LSI or like a high point RAID controller card, an HBA card, you want to run multiple HDMI capture cards, PCIe storage devices, any number of complex devices that require more specialized what are called option ROMs, right? Yeah, and you can do that at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, correct. And the board's definitely designed for that. And as you can see, also, you have more connectivity in terms of what the board has to offer. And so that's going to give you, of course, key flexibility in, uh, in regards to the, to the type of expansion uh, that you're going to be running on the board. Now, where you are going to see some differential is, of course, that the VRM is going to look a little bit more reduced because, like I said, it's not an overclocking or any chipset. The focus is still to provide a high efficiency and quality power uh, solution because these type of boards are generally going to be under consistent high-level usage because right. you, you maybe you're rendering, you know, you're doing a lot of transcoding work, you could be doing, um, you know, audio and video-based production. So the system still definitely needs to be capable and needs to be efficient, right. uh, but it's not necessarily needs the power requirements of a system that might be pushed beyond standard specifications, right? Um, but you're still going to get a lot of kind of uh, hallmark features that you're going to have in the WS line. So, of course, it features the latest generation of the i-series network controllers as well. So you got dual Intel gigabit network uh, mm -hmm. controllers on board, but these are the server-grade series, mm -hmm. so they offer even higher performance for guys that are interested in things like virtual machines and, and management of a simulated operating system environments or applications too, this latest generation of controllers can offer significantly improved performance uh, within those type of environments as well. So it's a really robust level yeah. that anybody who's familiar with an Intel NIC and the ProSet management tools that are offered in there, it's really robust, really extensive. So it's option, uh, It's really nice that you have those options available on this board. Yeah, it's just made to last all day as well. Like yeah. It's doing stuff all day, moving big files, uploading, downloading. Definitely. And, uh, of course, you have teaming support that you could, of course, uh, go ahead and do that if you needed even a larger level of aggregated uh, throughput. You've got some other nice little things, too, like uh, this little USB internal header. It's a vertical header where some people it's like, why, why do you have a vertical header on the motherboard? It's kind of weird. Um, and that's because there are kind of professional content creation mm -hmm. applications that require, like, a USB dongle. And the uh, thing is that you might not want to leave that USB dongle or that key connected to the back of your motherboard because maybe somebody might actually come by, they could break it off, they could steal it. And they um, got your license. Yeah, and they got yeah. your license for your application. Now you can just go ahead and directly install that, leave that internally embedded, lock your system in your chassis, mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about it ever being compromised. Um, it's also a nice secondary option for people that maybe they want to run like a recovery-based environment, maybe a mm -hmm. secondary OS, um, you know, special command line options for maybe some form of like a Linux distribution. You can do a lot of really interesting things with just being able to attach a flash drive to that right. so it gives you just different points of flexibility in terms of what you're working it's with. It's actually really cool. Now a really cool feature that we've also integrated for this generation is a new function called Dr. Power. Um, so what Dr. Power does is it can essentially observe 
the power requirements that are being uh, drawn upon through the motherboard. So as an example is that in type of workstation system, you might have a lot of maybe storage, there could be multiple GPUs, you right. could maybe have a, an actual standard discrete card, but you could maybe have a compute card or like a render card. So maybe you're running something like a Tesla or like a Quadro card, right? right? Headless based, uh, uh, compute based cards. and. In certain situations, you can get to the point where you're actually requiring more power than maybe what your PSU can actually provide. Um, and what can happen in the situation is either the system can shut down, it can fail, and you don't want to maybe be in the middle of a situation where a render is occurring or where you're doing some transcoding, you're writing things to your actual uh, storage array and have that failure occur. It could compromise yeah. uh, the components. It could actually cause component failure. Yeah, it's, I love going somewhere and then coming back four hours later and seeing an error message instead of a you know render complete. Correct. Oh, um, man. That's so that's it's worse. something to be conscious of. The cool thing that we can do with Dr. Power is that now we can monitor that and we can alert you inside the operating system and let you know, hey, you've reached near close to your maximum power draw. Mm -hmm. It's recommended shut off an application so that you don't trigger the actual shutdown. Um, so this is a really nice little option that we have integrated that allows you to do this. And we can also monitor the power input uh, for like, a, let's say your 24 pin or your uh, your CPU based power so that if maybe you could plug those in there and maybe you're having a power initialization issue, we can also flag that and let you know, hey, you know, we want to be conscientious of that. Um, so there's a lot of really nice feature sets and functions that are incorporated down here, including even the advanced fan control functionality, which is nice because just because you have a workstation doesn't mean it should be a loud workstation, right? Now this is a different chipset. So does AI Suite completely work on this? We do have an AI Suite, but it's a modified version because since you're not going to be an chipset. overclocking, yeah. um, uh, it's not an overclocking oriented chipset, you're not going to have all the same exact levels of mm -hmm. functions and features in there, but it's still quite robust in terms of the options you're going to have available to you. Over on the P90, now this chipset doesn't have uh, PCI, but you've made it pass proof, right? Yeah. You guys added the PCI slots, to, or two of them? Correct. Uh, so mm -hmm. while this chipset actually has more additional lane support than standard Z87 boards because it's the C200, excuse me, uh, C226, yeah. um, we also want to be able to give that flexibility because in that type of environment, you may need legacy support, just like we keep some esoteric more controllers on there. Like we've got 1394 support on there, but we're keeping things fresh and modern while also giving you just more PCIe based bandwidth yeah. for, like I said, these newer complex based uh, professional controllers and cards and things like that. Now, what do we move to when we go over here? Uh, we've got the Z87 WS. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a whole other board in terms of really kind of bridging the divide of, let's say, the, the traditional kind of enthusiast in terms of having a high level of expansion, high performance components, um, and really being really robust in terms of level of connectivity and expansion that the board has to offer, but still really being centered in professional usage, SMB, prosumer, you know, content creation, things along those lines. So. The special thing is that it's based off the Z87 chipset, while the P9D WS, right, was based um, on that C200 series chipset. All right, now, are you still providing support for Xeon CPUs? Yes, but you still get Xeon CPU support, you still get ECC memory support, you still get the enhanced option ROM validation. Mm -hmm. um, so you're getting everything inherent to that, but also if you want to run a K-series part in there, even if you want to overclock it, that's entirely capable. And, and you guys are providing a lot of power here. Yes, there is. You've got two 8-pin connectors here. There is a, a very high degree of supplemental power, and this is actually more so that um, this board meets some very interesting cross usage markets. We have mm -hmm. some actually high end enthusiast gamers. We haven't even extreme benchers that actually like the WS series boards. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the level of validation that we go through and even the oh. component quality that we select, um, it's very high grade. Uh, if you actually look at yes. these inductors that we put on here, these are the same high performance inductors that are on the yeah. Maxima 6 Extreme board. Um, so these are actually rated for 60 amps a piece as mm -hmm. well. Um, so when you talk about the component quality, you're pretty much going toe to toe with our highest end enthusiast board but on a WS series board. And in that same vein, this is also our other four-way enabled board. So you can run two-way, three-way, or four-way based configurations on this as well. So this really complements somebody that's an enthusiast class gamer, really wants overclockability, right. a huge amount of scaling, and even wants advanced, just high performance features, right? It still gives you the four-way optimization technology. You get USB 3 boost, USB BOS mm -hmm. flashback, just like the P9DWS. But you're also gonna get complementary things like you know the 10 SATA 6G ports, the Fan Expert 2 technology, um, but you're even gonna add some special items. Items, right, so like this controller that we have built on here, this is a uh, four-port uh, specialized Marvel controller that we use. That's called our SSD caching two controller. So it's not those the as media like you use on the channel boards. Correct. Um, and what's different about that is that allows us to aggregate it SSD uh, caching. Yes. So we can go ahead and take <laughs> one single mechanical hard drive, and then we could take up to one, two, or three SSDs 
combine that together with the mechanical hard drive mm. and offer improved performance. So if let's say you're working, you know, 1080p video, 2K, 4K video, high resolution audio, you know, uncompressed photo work, yeah. you need that large density of the mechanical hard drive, but you also want to be able to improve its performance to be able to go ahead and more quickly access your content, especially large volumes or, or, or large libraries where you need to consistently read back that yeah. content. You know, I think a lot of people um, don't actually realize that one of the things that slows you down the most when you're doing uh, rendering and video editing is the speed of the hard drive. So yeah, that can array. really help. Yeah, and it's nice because if you think about it, you could have a lot of flexibility in the way the systems work, where you could have, let's say, even a rated base configuration or a single SSD on your primary fastest connection with the PCH, but mm -hmm. then still have this really nice complex sub storage base configuration running off the secondary drive. Mm -hmm. If you have really complex storage needs, you could run concurrent SSD uh, caching configurations where the PCH supports SSD caching, but then you could also even be running SSD caching on the secondary controller as well. Mm -hmm. So you could really have a huge amount of flexibility flexibility. Um, this board also includes the latest generation support uh, for MSATA SATA 6G. Uh, as opposed to in previous generations, you were limited to MSATA but only 3G based performance. Right. So that's a, an onboard header right here on the board that gives you that much more storage flexibility. So when you talk about that and then you still integrate the dual NICs that we talked about on the P9D, mm -hmm. where you have the i series, um, but they're the professional server grade yeah, NICs. Yeah, like that. You know, you're really talking about a really robust mm -hmm. level board. So I mean, you don't really compromise on a lot of connectivity. You've got 10 SATA ports with a more advanced controller. You've got eSATA 6G. You have mSATA. You got three-way, four-way support. The high-performance VRM with those super high-put amperage right. uh, inductors. Even high-performance MOSFETs. Um, but then you keep adding on all those other kind of prosumer or professional related features. Even with the Dr. Power that we talked about in the P9D, that's also featured on this board. So you're losing some of the legacy, like no PCI, no 1394. Correct. But you've got Thunderbolt and everything else as well. Uh, it's a mini DP port on this board. Oh, it is? Let me see yes. that. So, ah, yes. Mini DP. Um, so there, is there a Thunderbolt header on this? No. there's. A, well, we have our, our Thunderbolt EX expansion port, mm -hmm. um, but until... Uh, until we have Intel finalize the validation process on that card, it wouldn't directly be supported on there. So it can technically support Thunderbolt through an expansion card, but it's not natively integrated onto the board. Okay. Uh, but otherwise, you've pretty much almost got every single key connection that you would want on here. So the interesting thing about it is it's just as competent in terms of being able to be overclocked mm -hmm. as being put into a system that's really focused at just content creation and productivity. So you've got a huge amount of flexibility. I think I want one of these, Wendell. Yeah, we need to order some. <laughs> we need to order a few of these. <laughs> um, so overall, I didn't realize that I wanted one until I learned about it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's a great board, and that's the cool thing about it is that you're really getting an enthusiast-level board in terms of its performance-oriented characteristics, right? right? Or even maybe to a degree gaming-oriented uh, kind of expansion and performance aspects. Mm -hmm. But it's really still 100% a professional-level board. Um, so it really kind of straddles that line where you get all the things that you want. And, you know, even in a lot of the most mainstream-related functions where we talked about, like I said, USB 3 Boost, USB BIOS Flashback, the AI Suite, the USB Charger, the Fan Expert 2, even the TPU switch is our Memo K. That's all on here. So you really get kind of all the best features that you would want from the mainstream series. Mm -hmm. You then carry over a lot of the expansion and the performance oriented design from the enthusiast class RG boards, and then you get all the WS related technologies as well. So it really is a great, uh, you know, kind of focus on being able to give you a high degree of performance and flexibility. All right, so here we have the workstation boards. Um, there's a lot of different products out there so if this one had some features that you like but maybe you want something else maybe you want something different i highly suggest that you check out the tough series boards uh, the channel series boards and also the rog boards for the extreme uh, gamers out there but this one has a lot for gamers and people who like to get work done and i think a lot of people in our community i'm not sure you guys in the community let me know a lot of you guys may actually need something like this in your life and you just didn't know it existed kind of like me when this came out i you know i usually tend to like stay away from workstation boards i think oh that's going to be for a server or maybe somebody's not me but now that i saw the features it has i'm like hey you know what i could put a graphics card in that game all day render all night and be very happy so yeah. it's a really cool way to go if you guys want to see all the other videos there's a list on the screen overclocking tutorials tutorials on the uh, software check those out and uh stay tuned for the rest of our asus videos with jj You're sitting higher than you are. Is this chair like... There you go. This chair like goes up when I leave or something? <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's like he's gone. What did you do? Somebody's messing with you. I don't know, yeah.
Well, I knew there was some kind of a hair joke in there somewhere. Just hair, add your own hair joke. Hair it is. We're done. <laughs> I don't want to hear about that anymore. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's heresy. <laughs> you heretic. <laughs> that's where I was gonna go with that. So now I'm out. <laughs> now you're out. Yeah. All right. Uh... All right. Let's stop airing it out. <laughs> oh, God, this joke has had a miscarriage. <laughs> all right. All right. All, all right. right. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> that's, that's like way too far. You've taken it way. Like, no. <laughs> I can't help it. Oh. Well. Once more from the top with feeling. 